Hello there, it's Sev here from Three Counties Motorhomes and welcome to the video guide for the Auto Term Diesel Heater Unit. Now we're focusing on the uh, generation that has this older style control panel here. There is a more modern version of this which is uh, much uh, slimmer. It's more of a sort of thin rectangle shape. Um, we're focusing of course on this particular model right here. Now Diesel heater applications aren't limited to small vehicles, but you will more commonly find these in things like Volkswagen campers or similar type vehicles. Um, but you could certainly find them in bigger vehicles, of course, as well. Now, uh, what we are faced with here on this control panel is three buttons on the bottom. We have a left and a right button, either side of a central square button there. Uh, we'll call that the stop button because of the square symbol. It is immediately recognisable. Uh, and then we have an up and a down button here. There is a screen and then we have the auto term logo at the top. And then just at the top right here on the edge you can see three slits or notches these are a temperature or this is a temperature sensor right here which is important and we'll talk about that in just a moment pressing any button is going to bring the panel to life you can see the time and date there on the screen now if i press up or down on either of these arrows we're just going to cycle between uh, some temperatures and the sort of welcome or main screen if you will um, so this is showing the temperature sensors. So the number at the top is the number as detected from this temperature sensor right here. And 24 is the temperature at the um, heater itself. Now this unit can be paired with an entirely separate sensor. Um, and I believe this is trying to indicate that that separate sensor is not connected there's a break in the line there indicated by that x otherwise we would potentially see another number on this screen as well so in some installations you may have three numbers here uh, if you have the additional temperature sensor fitted now that temperature sensor that's additional is purely because if this control panel is mounted somewhere where the sensor here would be an unreliable or uh, a sensor that could be interfered with, maybe it's too close to a door or a window or something like that, then an additional sensor could be installed in order to be used and give a more reliable uh, temperature reading. So if you do have that extra sensor installed, of course, it's gonna be a little bit more preferable to use that. In this instance, uh, we just have a sensor on this control panel here, which is the top number, and in the heater unit itself, which is the number enclosed within the mock heater unit on that screen. So that's what we can access with the up and down arrows from the main screen, if you will. Next up, if I press the left or right arrows, we can go through the options. So first of all, we're going to have the option to set the language. We can see some information and Basically, to interact with any of these, we're just going to select them with the left or right arrows and press the stop button to go in. So, for example, on timers now, I could go into there and we could use the up or the down buttons here and the left or right arrows to go through and change timers. So we could choose what, what thing we want on, um, if we want the heating on or not, and what day and what time and so on. Press the stop button to go back out of any of these menus. The next one is settings, and this is going to be important. So we go into here and it says wait. Now, this is where we actually choose the temperature sensor we're going to use. So when it says at the top here, by T heater, that means the temperature uh, at the heater. And then the one that's selected at the moment, which is by T panel. And uh, that is, of course, going to be the temperature as read at the panel itself, this one right here. And then by T air, the next one down, this is uh, the additional sensor if fitted. OK, and now by power ignores temperature sensor altogether. And it's just going to output a set power level. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, and then we've got some various other things here. So in order to choose which type of operation we're going to use, uh, we're going to basically press the left or right arrow on our chosen option here. So if we choose by T heater, the temperature that we're going to regulate our output heat by is going to be um, uh, measured against the temperature as read at the heater. 
The T panel is going to measure the temperature here on the control panel, which is by far the best option in this particular installation. So whatever temperature it reads here, so for example, it reads 24 here, and we're asking it to reach 30. Well then, uh, until this temperature reads 30 degrees, the heater will keep kicking out uh, hot air. Uh, going down, of course, T-Air, we'd select that if we want to use the additional temperature sensor if fitted. Now, with by power, like I say, this is going to output a set power. So if I set this to, well, if we look down the bottom here, power value is set to 8 there. So with that being set to 8 uh, power value, that basically means that if we were to choose the by power option, whenever we turn the heater on, it's just going to turn on to power setting eight and just stay like that until we turn the heater off okay uh, this is much more like running a traditional sort of gas fireplace or something like that where you just choose a power setting when it gets too hot you either turn the power setting down or turn the heater off um, so we can run it in that sort of mode using the power option if we wish so to do that we would select by power press the right arrow to Put the tick mark next to it and then we can change our power value uh, by pressing left or right on the uh, arrows accordingly now temperature set point this is the point at which um, the unit is going to uh, command a temperature reading and then ventilation we could turn that on that basically means that the unit will stay on uh, whenever the tar target temperature is reached and continue to blow air um, to sort of blow the hot air. It's not just going to shut everything down immediately when the temperature has been reached. So those are your options there. Like I say, by T panel is by far the best option to use because it's going to compare your desired temperature with the temperature read here at this panel sensor or by air if you have that particular additional sensor fitted. So with that chosen, we can press the stop button to come back out of that menu. We then have options. If we go into here, we can just basically change some pretty simple settings to our um, discretion. So like I say, going up and down these menus, you just use the up or down button. Left or right will typically confirm or change options and stop will come back out. And after that, we're back to setting the time, which is simple. We just press the enter button in and we can change these values here as we so wish to set the time correctly. And that's basically it. So... Um, as you can see from the temperature sensors here, the sensor here next to my, uh, or on the control panel here is reading 25 degrees. So if I was to uh, to ask for 30 degrees in a moment when we turn the heater on, it's got five degrees to heat up. If we were to choose the heater sensor, then we would have six degrees to heat up. And of course, there is the potential for an additional sensor there. But there we go. So we've already covered that anyway. So let's now show you how to turn the heater on or off. But before I show you the heater, there's a cool thing you can do. If we press and hold the stop button here, like so, until it says starting, like so. If I let that go, it's now going to pop up with a screen saying ventilation. And basically, we can use the arrow keys here to choose our ventilation power. And this is just going to circulate um, air, basically. As simple as that. And if I confirm that or press the stop button that would then shut it down so by holding down bringing up the ventilation option it's not going to uh, it's not going to heat up any air it's not going to cool any air but it's just going to circulate ambient air and we can configure how intense that fan is using the left or right buttons there and that could be quite nice on a hot still day and to turn it off as you saw a moment ago we just press the stop button and that will stop the heater if we want to run the heating though, very easy, just press the stop button, uh, don't hold it in, just give it a tap and it will bring up the same starting menu but once it's fired up it has a very different screen. We can see we're heating now by the radiating option. 25 in small writing there or 26 it's just changed to that is the temperature sensor reading so it's currently reading 25 26 degrees here at this sensor. The large number that you see is our chosen temperature how hot we want to actually get we can change that number with the left or right arrows here okay if we were to press up or down we can just see the heating mode we're on and we can just see temperature sensor readings um, but that doesn't really affect anything to make changes we physically need to 
uh, make changes here. So, for example, at the moment, it's not really going to heat anything because it's already hotter than our chosen temperature. So at the moment, the fan's just staying on to blow air instead. But if I was to go above 25, 26 degrees, that will now command the heater to come on and it will start doing its thing. And again, to shut this down, all you do is press the stop button and that will shut the heater down. And we're back to the main screen. And like I say, after a small period of time, uh, you will get a um, you will get a time out here. The screen will turn itself off so you don't have any annoying lights at night. And that's really it. Now, I know it's confusing, but as I said at the beginning of the video, the um, the user interface is not very good for this heater. It's quite confusing. Um, so. Um, you know, do spend some time just having a little play. But just to very briefly recap, the left or right buttons here are going to cycle through the main options. And the options that are going to choose how your heater operates are in settings. You can enter or leave menus by pressing the stop button. When you're in a menu that you can select options, you go up or down the options with the up or down arrows confirm or make changes to those selected options using the left or right buttons and exit using the stop button and that's basically how you navigate the various pages from the main menu pressing up or down just shows you the temperature sensor readings um, but doesn't allow you to make any changes a long press of the stop button will bring in the ventilation mode only a short press of the stop button will start or stop your heater and there we go. I'm Sev. I hope this video has been useful for you and thank you very much for watching.